begins. We're in time, aren't we? Are we in time? Yes, we're in time. Where are you in time? Right here, right now, aren't we? Yes. Could you be anywhere else? Your mind could put you somewhere else, couldn't it? But here we are, right here, right now, in a special moment in time that will never happen again, like this in this space and time. And so the very first thing that we do to bring our awareness to our hearts is realize that our heart never leaves us in the moment. It's always right here, right now. It's always in this moment that we are operating. And our brains might hang on to things from the past, stories from our childhood, and project into the future and worry and also dream but that we're always right here, right now, no matter what, and our heart, like a good friend, like a best friend, is always right here, right now with us. So now what does that mean in terms of processing emotions? Do you ever really process emotions in the future? Is the emotions of your childhood still locked up and stored in the past? Yes? This is the way that the brain projects it in a linear fashion, right? But the reality is, because you're always existing, have always existed, always will exist right here, right now, it actually takes all of that emotional energy that you've ever experienced, all those charges, and it actually follows you. It just feels buried. But it's here, right here, right now. So you don't get to run from the past. The past, the impressions and the stories are there in the mind as stories, but the emotions are actually right here, right now, with you right now. And so your overall state of your energy and the overall state of your being is actually right here, right now, with maybe some varied emotions, trying to operate in this reality the best you can. And overall, at some stage, you'll have to deal with it. It will come out. It will bubble to the surface. It will show up in your everyday reality. And when it does, we call these triggers. How many of you have ever been triggered before? Okay. How many of you have ever been triggered by something so simple and so silly that you feel embarrassed about it, or you try to tell the person, look, it's, not, it's actually not that thing that I got really upset about. It's actually not that. It just reminds me of something that's deeper inside me. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. It's because the reality is those emotions are always right there. Now, we live in the age of disruption. That's what this theme is centered on. And that's why I'm wearing no shoes. It's part of a cultural shift, right? I don't need shoes right now. It's warm enough. I like the carpet on my feet. So we're talking about disrupting a cultural age that has lived in the mind for so long and built systems from the mind that are not working, that are broken. And it's because we don't have enough heart infused in our systems. Imagine your body operating without heart. You wouldn't live very long, would you? The number one thing you need in order to survive right now, and in this room you would die if you didn't have it, is oxygen. Now the oxygen is circulated by the heart along with the blood. So it just shows you how vital this epicenter of your being really is. And the heart also happens to have this energy center there, your heart chakra, that also processes the bulk of your energy if you allow it. You have to move your awareness there. Now, most people are living in their minds, and here I am in a business school, and it's interesting because my background is in business, being in my head, and my story actually begins about five years ago. The big shift into the heart began with a breakup. Now, how many of you have ever experienced heartbreak? Okay, how many of you are still experiencing some kind of heartbreak? Okay, right. Not easy, right? Okay. But the heart doesn't actually break. I've heard the best saying that it just breaks open for you to experience more of it, right? These deep connections form. You start to experience this love. The love energy starts to happen. What you have to realize is that you're actually always in the love field because it's always right here, right now. And though the people in front of you may shift, 
Sometimes you hope they don't, and that's fine. You can hope and create and dream and co-create and collaborate as best you can. But when they do shift, you're broken open, and you get to experience the love field for yourself, with you at the epicenter of the love field in abundance. Love is abundant all the time. And the same emotions that you can experience of being in love can be experienced solo if you will allow yourself to experience love all the time. As long as your mind doesn't give you a reason not to be in love. Your mind gives you reasons to be in love. Well, this person's attractive and they're beautiful and I love them. And they have all these reasons to fall in love, right? To fall in love, to surrender to the field because that person brings out that feeling of love inside you. The love is inside you. The love epicenter is in your heart space. And if we can tune into our heart field, we can actually start to give birth to all kinds of creations from this space. That's where the art comes from. That's where the music comes from. And I'm gonna play with you guys a bit as we go through this because as I've been exploring this heart space energy, I've been doing a lot of creation here and we have to interrupt patterns of the brain in order to shift the focus away from the patterns that you expect. A TED talk suddenly becomes a song talk you didn't expect, but now we continue. And now we're in a different flow because it wasn't what you thought you know. And now it's moving to a different direction, a redirection of energy and focus and flow. And now you know it's so fast, it's quicker than you know you can grow. In the moment you decide you can shift and go on a ride, how many are ready to go? Or what's holding you back? Maybe your pride? <laughs> when we start to take new shapes and new names, suddenly we can rearrange everything that we thought was the same, our identities, are not what we thought they were to be the moment we decide to create a new reality. I am the definition of me. I can design, create, co-create anything that I choose within the space of my domain, which is me and is my name. So I have changed my name from James Rick Stenson to James Sundance to represent the dance with the stars that I know that I am when I am not far from the reality of where we are. We can soar and we can fly as a world together. We don't have to collide with new systems and new ways. New creative energy can create a new reality for all. We don't have to fall. Some have predicted that this is how it's to be. But I see a higher energy in you and in me because we're the same star systems, don't you see? So let's Take it in our own hands and let's make new demands of ourselves, a new expectation for our reality. It doesn't have to be the patterns that you already see. You have it now. It's always right here, right now. So where do we direct our focus and our energy? Do we make it in capitalism and the money that we want to have in our hands and hold? And are we so bold to say that maybe there's a better way? When we direct our energy and our intentions and our focus, it's almost like magic, hocus pocus. What we dream and what we try to create, we manifest. And sometimes the real reality behind it is all too late. The one that we really want to dream and create from our heart's heart. I have heard many delay their dreams because it's not always what it seems. They feel that they need to hold down a job and a position. But that is your decision. And you always have the power to say, I want to see this reality open up in a new way. And so I'm here today to say that this is our fate, that we don't need to hesitate any further. That by setting the intention before this talk, that I was here to help heal the heart of the world, I knew that I wouldn't do this walk by myself. I knew that I would just start a spark inside you and maybe make you bark a little bit and say that I can confide in you and plant a seed that will grow into something that will be bigger than my dream. If we can come together as a world, if we can start redirecting our forces, 
then we can gallop like horses into a new sunset, a dance with a new bright star that again is not very far. The moment we decide, we can take that ride and we can go there together, my friends, without our pride. Because it is collaboration, not competition, that is paving the new way. It is collaboration that will dwarf capitalism as we can see that there is a new ism that is rising and it is in all of us and it is this moment in France that I did a little dance and I paved the way in my own way, my own crazy way to come here and say all the way from the Costa Rican jungles, <laughs> barefoot on the stage, that there is a new culture that's forming and that at first before a thousand it's called a cult and then after a thousand it's called a culture and the one that you're in now doesn't always have to be the same and that if you can remember this moment and let your heart play a new game, we can co-create it together. New systems designed from the heart by the very start. And we're starting to do this, by the way, because once you believe that you can and it's no longer a fantasy and you start to get the evidence that it is coming about, then you just want to dance and shout that it's already happening and I am part of it and I can get out of my mind and all of that <laughs> that used to stop me from being who I really want to be. You are the creators of your own reality, and we're doing this together. And I, if you need to create a new name to play a new game, then that's what you do. But don't stay the same if it doesn't feel like it belongs here. Because this new reality is overcoming fear. And sometimes that means doing things drastic, but then it feels fantastic because you're really feeling alive. And that becomes your drive. And you can do it the moment you decide that this is going to be my new way to live. So I share with you, five years ago I had a breakup massively, opened my heart, and then I started to do something that my nervous system didn't want me to do. The nervous system is designed to avoid pain. But I was feeling all this pain, and I had been meditating for a long time, and I was in this high level of awareness for me, my perception is I was in this high level of awareness and I said, no, I'm not gonna run from the pain this time, I'm gonna run towards it, what are you trying to tell me? And so I really started to feel into it and I felt into it in waves and I cried and in waves I felt into it and I cried and in waves I felt into it and I cried and pretty soon I couldn't feel into it anymore. It was gone. I mean, essentially I just felt like this burning in my heart space but I didn't feel the pain anymore. And I kinda liked it, I liked the burning. And I started to use it as a pilot light to burn through anything new that was coming to my life that I was processing. I started to learn how to live with an open heart. And I wasn't afraid of the pain anymore. I became a spiritual warrior. And in this journey, I encountered others that wanted to do it, that wanted to confront it, that wanted to process it, but didn't know how, and I held space for them. And I actually created a whole model around it, which I'll take you guys through super quick because we are in a time period that does have boundaries. So if everyone will close your eyes real quick and put your hands on your heart and really feel in, go beyond the concepts of this, really feel into your heart space. And I want you to imagine the world is a maze, this big maze with home in the center. And home is where you want to go. Peace, love, bliss, calmness, centeredness at your home space. That's where you want to go. That's where you want to be. That's what's always calling us. And now, outside of the maze is all this gray area. It's the mind stuff. It's the identity, the story of me, judgment, how things should be, my stuff and all the things I'm accumulating, the addictions and how they're stimulating. Move out of that gray area, close your eyes, go into your heart, and start moving through the layers of emotions that you're gonna experience. And if you have to, you can listen to this again because I'm gonna go very fast, my friends. So the first layer that you encounter as you start going into this maze, drilling into the center of your being, you may encounter anger. There's only one way through anger, and that is forgiveness, whether it's forgiving another or forgiving yourself. Anger is a strong emotion. It can feel very empowering. But when you learn to let go of that as an addiction and the drive for why you want to create all these things in your life, you can move past it. And what is coming through now might be sadness or even depression, because at the core of that is the pain that started it all. But there's only one way through sadness and depression, and that again is to feel through it. Ask for more of it instead of fight it. And lo and behold, by feeling, you start healing. By feeling, you become renewed. 
And you get to choose, not from the emotions, what kind of life you want to live, but from the core of what you really feel from your heart, being informed. Even depression. When I deal with people that have depression, I say, feel more depressed. And they smile at first, almost always. And I say, why are you smiling? You're supposed to be depressed. And they say, well, I don't know. I say, well, because you've been fighting it. I said, stop fighting it. Just feel depressed. Let your heart take you inside. It wants to teach you something. Let it take you inside and cry and let go of all the reasons why you won't express. Because at first it might be expressions of pain and anguish, but then it's going to be expressions of joy and happiness unrestrained. You are a work of art, each and every one of you. And if you allow yourself to start each day from your heart, and even when it's hard, go inside and stay there and feel and be and come from that place. And when you make decisions on what business you're going to do or what jobs you're going to do or what systems you're going to create or where you're going to live, when you check into your heart first and you say, I choose because my heart has informed me this is what's going to make me feel most alive and happy. Then you're shifting us towards a better world and we are healing the heart of the world because you and I at the epicenter, there is a world of concept, and then there is us at the heart that are holding down a field, holding a field within ourselves, holding a field within a room, within a community, and that community expands, and it becomes the world. And I want to read you guys something in case there's ever any doubt in terms of how much you can heal the world. About a week ago, I had somebody at Coravita, which is a healing heart center in Costa Rica, where I live, and we're cultivating the space okay, of designing and creating a better world, the cultural DNA of the future. And we had somebody come by who had been by a few times before and really enjoyed it, and she said, um, her husband actually in, in, in said, we, we would like to come. We just found out she was diagnosed with, a, with tumors in her body and in her, in, in her stomach and everything, and you know, basically we, before she goes to the States and gets surgeries and everything, we would like for her to come and just be shed some love. You know, we would like that collective unity to come and shed some love. And I said, great. And when she was there, I remembered, you don't know how much you can heal the world unless you try. And I said, let's do something collectively. We brought her together, and we sang for her, and we brought energy and intention to her heart. And he said very quickly, I need to tell you that the doctors are so amazed, as a week later, at how much the tumor has reduced in these last seven days of powerful meditations and intentions of such powerful, heart-open human beings. And since the last sonogram, it's almost completely gone. They're canceling the surgery and are asking her to be monitored for the next three to six weeks as a special case study. They've never seen anything like this before and had to re-verify the date of the last sonogram because it's so unbelievable. I believe that we can do the same thing collectively with the heart of the world, and I look forward to co-creating that new reality with all of you. Thank you.